Hello everyone, good morning or good evening. My name is Shali Guo from Guangxi University. And today the topic is a common garden experiment reviews clinical trends of bud phenology in sugar maple and the black spruce populations in boreal forest. And I'm going to introduce two study cases related to sugar maple and the black spruce. So first, uh, one simple question, why do we study bud phenology? In, in general, phenology just describe the recurring biological events such as budding, flowering, or fruiting. Among all these phenological events, bud phenology is very important because the onset of bud surge just indicated the carbon circle between atmosphere and terrestrial ecosystems, which have a great impact on the carbon distribution in the world. A lot of studies have, uh, have explored the phenological response to climate change. For example, over the time scale, the study found that the global warming has triggered earlier bud phenology. However, after 1988, the advanced rate just decreased because bud phenology started to have a lower sensitivity to the increasing temperature. Also, studies have found that the climate change has synchronized the bud phenology along different latitudes, which have a different impact on the species distribution and the carbon fixation. Based on previous study, we, we, we noticed that those studies are based on the in-situ observation. However, the adapt adaptive potential to climate change studies are quite rare. So our aim is to estimate the phenological adaptation mechanism of the main tree species in boreal forest. We just choose the two main tree species. One is boreal um, broadleaf species, black sugar, um, sugar maple, and another one is conifer tree species as um, black spruce. We aimed to collect uh, seeds of different uh, um, provenances and uh, planted in a common garden. We observed the bud phenology of seedlings from different provenances and uh, clarified the adaptation mechanism of bud phenology. We used uh, this result to predict the response of bud phenology to future global change in North American forests. And here I would like to introduce the study case one is related to sugar maple. This is the natural distribution of sugar maple. We collect the seeds from 30 provenances of sugar maple. Then after one year, we have the seedlings cultivated in the greenhouse. One year later, we planted the sugar maple in the common garden. We observed the phenology and meanwhile we download the climate over the past 30 years of the um, seed origins. Here is the statistics. We can see first uh, we extracted the climate factors. We used the multivariate analysis to find if there is any significant difference of bud phenology among different populations. Then we used the ordinal lodged models to estimate the probability of bud phenology and try to find the driver for the ecotypes if there are any. Here is the monthly minimum and maximum temperature during the past 30 years. We can see a clear pattern along the latitude of the temperature. Here we can see there is our obvious ecotypes of sugar maple populations and from the low, from the um, coldest uh, site, which is minus three degree, we can see the bud phenology is most uh, earlier. And we explain this maybe when plants are growing in the quiet, cold sites, they tend to have a higher metabolic activity, which can help them to make full use of the limited green season and have a better growth, and also compared with sugar maple from other provinces, they have, they have a lower requirement of chilling and forcing, and this is from genotypes 
explanation, and this can also help them to make full use of the limited green season. And uh, from further statistics, we found that the minimum spring temperature, which is correlated with the frost as proneness origin, may drive phenology. And uh, this work has been published in Trapezology. We, we mainly highlight the, the driver force of frost in the future forest measurement. And next one is about the black spruce. Here we can see we have five seed origins populations and we transplanted the, sugar, the black spruce from a colder sites to a warmer site into Simcoach in Quebec, Canada. Here is the picture of our home garden and we observed the bud phenology. Actually, in this study, we have two, uh, two phases. One is bud burst in spring. We can see different uh, phases of bud phenology uh, according to the appearance of the bud. And here is autumn when there's a bud set, which is the indicator of the dormancy near the winter. We aimed to compare the variance in bud phenology among four years and the prognosis. We also want to assess the drivers of bud phenology along this gradient. We have two hypotheses. One is that the variance of bud phenology among populations is quite higher than within populations, which indicates the ecotype of black spruce. And another one, we, we also hypothesize the temperature of the original size can affect bud phenology. Here is our study area, and here's five location of black spruce in, in Canada. And according to this PCA results, we can see that the mean annual temperature is quite different along the five location of the black spruce. We also calculated the heritability of the bud burst and the bud set, because which is an indicator of the ability to heritate the, the phenology from, from, from the mother trees. And we can see on average, heritability estimates were similar between bud burst and bud sets. And from this part, we can see the result is quite similar with uh, the results of um, sugar maple. And uh, the bud burst originating from colder sites is earlier than that from warmer sites. However, we found another interesting phenomenon that is for, for black spruce originating from colder sites. When they start earlier, they end earlier. So whatever, if you, whatever you come from, any prominences, they have a quite similar green season lens. This is quite different from our traditional view. And this indicates a close correlation between phenological phases of spring and autumn. And even though they're from different uh, prominences, but they have the similar ability to, to have the photosynthesis. And, and further carbon fixation. And the last, last analysis about the different factors contribution to the variance of bad phenology. The most important one is the year is represented the interannual phenotypic plasticity. And this is very important because it can help plants to gain a longer period and to facilitate the carbon fixation and which can help them to survive in the under global change. And we also found that the, the prominence, the variance among populations, which is indicated of the prominence effect is higher than the variance within the populations, which is indicated of the Hopsic family. And uh, this answered our hypothesis and uh, highlights uh, the different ecotypes of, of different populations. And also we can see there's a large contribution of errors. And maybe we, we explain that uh, among uh, the, the high diversity among individuals can explain the errors because for a given population, even though they have adapted to the past climate, they still have to maintain a certain of the genetic uh, variance, which can help them to prepare better for the future climate change. And this work has been published in Journal of Ecology in this year. 
and last party's conclusion, our results demonstrated that the avoidance of late spring forests is a very important driver for bud phenology in sugar maple populations. And also we found that the close relationship between spring and autumn phenology should be considered during the phenological modeling, which can help to precisely predict the boreal species and the climate change. And uh, I would like to all the people who worked uh, to holding this field of forest, which really offer an excellent uh, opportunity to communicate with each other. And I would also like to thank my, my professor in, in China Botanical Garden, in South China Botanical Garden, and Jian uh, Guohuang, uh, and Sector Rossi, which is a professor in, in, in Ilguk. And uh, thank you, everyone.